This episode of Let's Knit Together is sponsored by Yarnmarket.com. Fabulous fashions, fast and friendly. Tell us a little about yourself, how you got into the knitting world in the first place and design. I um, did fashion and textiles at art college and it was a really fine art kind of base course. It wasn't very practical, so it meant that actually, although during the time I was there, I, I made things like cardboard coats and I made um, hats out of crisp packets and it was a bit kind of wild, like the kind of things that are being made now. Um, I was completely unemployable. So instead of getting a, a, a job in the sort of fashion industry when I left, I worked as a cleaner for a couple of years and worked in a factory. But at that time, there were lots of kind of soft sculpture around. And I started making knitted flowers and then and plants. Then because of, the, um, because of the publicity I got for that, that's when magazines started asking me if I'd like to design um, for them. So it's always kind of been in publishing rather than ready to wear. So designing for knitters rather than designing for people to buy the knits. Right. When did you first start uh, knitting though? I don't really know. I, I know that it, it, I'd, I've always wanted to have a more romantic story, really, and that I'd kind of learned at my mother's knee or my grandmother's knee, but that mum, bless her, she used to get out the same school cardigan year after year and do a bit more of a sleeve, and then it'd get, get put away again in the spring. Um, but she, she taught me to knit. When I actually then got commissioned from magazines to do hand knits because the plants had been machine knitted, I had to quickly go home, and she gave me a... Um, uh, a sort of refresher course in knitting over a weekend while she kept forcing food and um, uh, cups of tea down me. <laughs> well, you, you've actually done some amazing designs over the years. Um, what is it that, uh, that you do to sort of approach a project to come up with that design? Um, I think it's different in... in uh, it, it depends. Now I've got my own yarn. It's... I suppose it, in some ways it's changed the way I design because now I'm, I'm sort of there at the beginning of when the yarn's being uh, manufactured and I might have said to them, oh, I'd like a, perhaps a bit more wool in it, perhaps a bit more silk in it, um, so that I want it to perhaps drape a bit more. So then now I'm, when I'm designing, it's more about the yarn, I think, because I'll know that, say, my Eco Aaron or my Eco Baby has got a lot of stitch detailing, so it makes you want to create... Um, stitch patterns, yes, cables, perhaps moss stitch that have a lovely clarity to them. It may be something like my Amalfi yarn that came out in the spring that has fantastic drapes, so it makes me think about, um, you know, garments that will flow. Uh, because I, I think I'm really lucky in that I'm, because I design for babies and children as well as fashion knitwear, they're two very different disciplines too. So when I'm designing for women, I'm really passionate about trying to think about the shapes of women and where the, the silhouettes will be the most flattering. When I'm designing for babies, I obviously want to design things that are really kind of cute and stylish, but I'm also thinking about practical things like perhaps making them sort of like A-line so they go over nappies or um, making them practical. So you, you sort of take it from a spinner's point of view, though, because you're able to craft the yarn that you want and the project that, that, uh, that you want to create from that yarn. Yeah, and I suppose, too, because I'm involved in... Um, it, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm lucky because it's still very personal in that although I'm a brand, um, I still find myself feeling a bit embarrassed and uneasy about that because I just feel it's a bit odd when you're just an individual in a way but the lovely thing about it is because I'm licensed to a company back in the UK I don't have to worry about you know the ordering the yarn I don't have to worry about warehousing or anything like that I I only have to con uh, be involved in the creative side which is from developing and thinking about the yarns the color palettes the designs and then getting involved in photography at the other end so um, as I say, it has changed the way that I design because I'm there right at the beginning, whereas before it might be if I was commissioned by a magazine and they wanted me to design in a particular yarn, but it may not have necessarily been a yarn that I felt I could do much with. You know, it might have had some acrylic in, which meant that because, as I say, the way I design, where I love stitch particularly and I like smooth yarns, I would sometimes find, think that I wasn't actually creating the best that I could because I was struggling with the type of yarn that I've been asked to use. Right. 
now um, I'm incredibly privileged in that I'm working with yarns that I love anyway so that's fantastic to be able to do that. You've, you've sort of uh, passed on your, your best practices and tips in, in one of your latest books. How did that book come about and what is, what is the most exciting thing about bringing that together? Oh, that the tips the, the, the knitting, the, the tips, tips for knitting, and the books, and yeah. the design book. Um, the design book actually came out a couple of years ago when I was saying that um, how much I admired knitwear designers is that they were creating the fabric, and there was one particularly a designer that I was sort of saying, you know, it's awful because people can be really patronising. One about knitters, they always. Um, it's always used in, say, advertising, that if you say something like that someone's elderly or if you're describing them as being boring, they always go like, and they've taken up knitting. Um, and, but there's always been this thing that somehow knitting, knitting in design wasn't as, um, I don't know, didn't have the same kudos, if you like, as, as, as uh, design in other areas of fashion. And I was just sort of talking about how the excitement, if you like, of bringing just an ordinary Aran sweater together, how by placing different stitches together, and then I was going to say how I started to talk about how I could get really sort of um, involved in, should it be a four stitch cable between the panels or a six stitch, and <laughs> then I'd do both, and then, you know, I'd have to lie down in a dark room for about an hour or something <laughs> until it passed over me. But there is that thing, it's like sort of creating landscapes or... Um, so I think when I was talking like that to her, I think it could have gone either way. She could have gone, she's completely barking mad, or is this something that actually might be of uh, interest to other people that have started to think about that step from um, knitting and loving knitting, but to thinking about designing. And I think probably the difference was is that there are such great books around that, that are sort of more number crunching, which is obviously really important in the maths of it. Right. But, but that this, what we would do with this book is that instead of saying, you know, this is how you grade a pattern, this is how you do an armhole shaping, it would be to say more than, this is a great armhole shaping if you're doing that kind, working in that kind of yarn. If it's for a child, you need to make sure there's enough of a sort of um, sleeve depth measurement so they can wave their arms around. And it was more about the journey until you get to the bit where you need to worry right. about the numbers. So it's, it's less about the technical and more about yes. the creative. Yes, absolutely yeah. that, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, the, the, some of the th techniques you talk about are about uh, body shapes and uh, textures and patterns and, and thinking about how to design for people and not, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, and, and not just a model. Mm -hmm. Do you typically think about that a lot when you're doing your own yeah. designs? Yeah, I, I absolutely do because I think it's really important to, do, to make things that people feel comfortable in and is flattering because I know that... Um, I mean, I, for instance, I would never order something, a mail order. I always have to try things on in a shop because I have quite, a, you know, wider hips, you know, narrow shoulders. It's difficult for me to find dresses that fit properly, so I wear separate. So I suppose because of how I approach the kind of clothes that I wear, I know how difficult it is or how self-conscious women can be about right. certain shapes. So I'm aware of the fact that you know, most of us are perhaps broader in the beam right. than they are in the shoulders. So that if I'm doing something like along the tunic, that feeling of something being really tight around your bottom is horrible and can make you feel really um, uncomfortable and, and self-conscious. So I always try and get more of an A-line shape or get some flair into it. Um, Do you have, a, you have an example of that right there, isn't oh, that, yeah. that sweater? So it is A-line, but I also like to do things that have back detailing. Right. So there, you get the kind of, you know, you get more of a, um, you get more width in the back, but it's just by having something that just gives it that little, it is the detailing, just makes it look slightly different. Right. Not only the, the detail, but also the shaping, so that the front can be simple and, yes. and elegant, while, yes. while the back can have a little detail yeah. and plaster. And also, even things like, um, uh, you know, to make sure that if you're doing A-line, that the, a -line, that, that the shaping begins just under the bust, because okay. otherwise, I think the problem with hand knitting is, is that, as much as I love it, it can look frumpy. Right. Um, you know, um, sometimes if something comes back from knitter it might be slightly too big or slightly too narrow and that can make all the difference between something looking really stylish and something looking quite ordinary right. which is why um, 
I always bang on when I'm talking to knitters about tension, you know, about gauge. Because I go, I know that sometimes you say you don't mind, um, but as long as you don't mind the fact that it might not be the same proportions as the, the design that you've seen and really liked, because it can just make something, say, look quite ordinary and a bit dated. So, sometimes knit knitters tend to uh, knit much larger uh, sizes yeah. than they should, yeah. uh, especially when they're doing um, either cables or large mm -hmm. stitch patterns. Is that something you find that you try to overcome with some of your designs? Um, one of the, um, are you talking about sort of sizing in terms of do you go up to a really yeah. big size? For, for, from an ease yes. perspective. Um, it's <laughs> actually, it's, uh, I'm, I'm always slightly nervous about answering the, this question because I, sometimes I think it can be misinterpreted. But, but one of the, I think one of the things I love doing most of all is when I can take garments round to a store and to see people try them on because I sometimes think that larger women um, knit sizes that are too big. But, but, but the other side of that is, of course, until they can try those si sizes on, it's... They don't know. No, they don't know that. Right. But because when you're... I feel it's quite important not to keep grading up to the very big sizes all the time because yeah. people don't get bigger incrementally. You know, if you're a size 52-inch bust, you're not 8 foot tall, but you can't... But in some patterns, I can see where people have... I think in order not to look like they've ignored that the, the larger sizes, yeah is they just keep making them longer and wider and it just means that often larger women are, are making something that then falls off their shoulders, it doesn't fit properly and I think then it can um, probably stop them feeling very nice in what they're wearing. And I remember some years ago I tried, uh, some, oh, somebody said to me that they'd stop knitting for themselves anymore and they only knitted for children because they didn't feel that anything looked nice on them and I, I tried a, a, a 34 inch bust garment on her and it just transformed her and it was just one of those moments it was at a workshop over here about four years ago which I still remember and she went away because I'd been able to explain to her through her being able to try something on that um, you don't always have to knit the 52 inch buns you can because knitwear has that lovely ability to um, it's the, what we like about it is that strange it, right. and form and right. um, yeah so I think sometimes that uh, people feel that the very large sizes are ignored but I think it's more about getting the shaping right mm -hmm. to get something in that slightly defines the waist uh, to do the A-line in certain lengths so that it flares over the hips <laughs> I would rather do that than just keep and making the sizes size. much much larger yes we won't be having a live show in October. However, there will be a Let's Knit Together meetup at the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival in Rhinebeck, New York. We'll be meeting at 3 p.m. on Saturday, October 16th by the picnic tables, directly in front of Building A. We'd love to see you, so stop by if you're going to be at Rhinebeck. Yarnmarket.com has an extensive inventory of Debbie Bliss patterns and books. Debbie's newest book, The Knitter's Year, is a fantastic collection of 52 small projects ranging from chair cushions to hats. Yarn Market sent us this copy of the book to give away to one lucky winner. Leave a comment on our website at letsknittogether.com on this episode number 82 by October 5th with your answer to this question. How many projects have you knit so far this year? We'll choose one random commenter to win this fantastic new Debbie Bliss book. Don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. Go to letsknittogether.com and subscribe with iTunes. New episodes will download automatically to your computer when they become available. It's free! And remember, you don't need an iPod to subscribe. How many projects have you knit so far? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do that for? <laughs> it was like your hand moved like you couldn't stop it or something. <laughs> okay. Okay. I got to not zoom in so much. <laughs> it gets kind of freaky, but maybe that's okay. That one was, it was good. It was good, but I'm going to try to do it a little less this time. These are Eric, Eric bloopers. <laughs> no, it's not me. It's not a blooper.
and it worked. It worked. With your iPhone. But there you go. <laughs> so we didn't have to put my arm in it. That's right. Thank God. <laughs> Creeped people out. <laughs> like a third arm or something. <laughs> okay.